What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. In this video, we're going to be talking about your unpopular opinions. I put a tweet out a couple days ago on my Twitter saying, send in your biggest unpopular opinions that are Chelsea related. And as usual, you guys smashed it. We're going to do this over the space of a couple videos because there's too many there's too many thoughts to go through in just one episode. But before I start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well if you want to see more content like this. And let me know if you enjoy it down in the comment section below. Now, we'll go straight into the first opinion. This one's coming from Crago and he says we've seen the best of Ruben Loftus-Cheek in the Chelsea shirts and I, I do think it's a bit early to call that I understand why because he's now 24 reaching 25 He's still having the same problems of injury It's hard to keep calling him a player with potential the player that still is on the cusp of greatness Because how long does he really have left to reach that and I understand that but again I still think it's a little bit early to make that call I think Give him till the end of this season with Fulham. I think this year is a massive year in the career of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Probably the biggest in his career. And even going back on loan out to another mid-table to potentially relegation threat inside. It feels like a huge step back for him. Because this is the exact same move we made from a couple years ago when we sent him on loan to Crystal Palace. And that stupid injury, I mean that stupid fixture in the friendly match before the Europa League final. And that awful pitch as well. It's like the worst thing that could have happened to him. And... For the, the timing of the friendly as well as the quality of the pitch, it really wasn't worth it. We didn't need it. I understand why you're saying it might be the end of him, but I think it's still a bit too early to call. I think he's going to have a massive role in that Fulham side. I think Fulham are going to rely on him heavily and he needs to feel like he's one of the best players at a big club again. Well, I say big club, it is Fulham. But... He does need to feel like he's a big player at a club. And I feel like that's, that loan deal could potentially help to bring his mojo back because he hasn't looked like the same Ruben Loftus-Cheek on the field. He looks like he's still struggling to believe himself and he's still struggling to get past the mental aspects that uh, of that Achilles injury. But I still think it's too early to call. I think there's plenty of time for Loftus-Cheek in the case of this season. But yeah, it is a huge season for Loftus-Cheek. Ross Barkley could be elite if he was given a nail down starting role. Do not, do not start this agenda again. Please, I'm so tired of Barkley agenda. Aston Villa move is best for him because realistically it is his level. Chelsea is not his level. We've given him plenty of opportunities over the last two and a half years and he's been consistently average. I think he's the same type of player as Loftus-Cheek where they need to have the team flow around them a little bit except Loftus-Cheek actually has the quality. I don't believe Ross Barkley has compared to it. He always struck me as a sort of player who knew what he wanted to get done in his head. He just could never really translate it to his feet. I don't know if the shirt was too heavy for him or something like that, but he looks a lot more he looks a lot more free at, at Aston Villa. So I'm happy for him. I hope he has the best move there. I hope he has a has I hope they activate a buy clause as well, or they just sign him afterwards. But Barkley at Chelsea is not happening. We've given it enough opportunities. It's dead. I'ma just leave that at that. It's dead. Mason Mount is awful, overrated. This one, nah, I don't agree with it. Awful, hell no. I still believe in his potential. I still believe he's got a lot to offer this Chelsea side. He's already shown how key for us last season in terms of our pressing aspects. Even towards the games pre and post lockdown, he was excellent. You can see him, he was all over the field. His creativity in the final third was brilliant. Trust me, this is a player that is going to go places. And I feel like... The criticism that he's getting from a lot of fans is, is so undeserved and the only thing I will respect is that he has been overplayed. I don't think he's overrated but I think he's been overplayed. That's why he's had a bit of criticism going his way. That and the end product which hasn't been what we've wanted to see from him towards this from the start of this season which I get. But to say he's awful, to say he's overrated, I think you're just overhyping, you're just over-exaggerating it a bit too much. That's not the case with Mason Mount. The guy is going straight to the very top. And I believe in him personally. I think there's a lot of Chelsea fans that believe in him as well. It is very 50-50. There are fans that aren't really in support of Mason Mount right now. The only thing I will say is, as much as I know how stacked our midfield is right now, I still think there's going to be opportunities for him to get game time. So I'm not going to agree with what's being said about him. He ain't overrated. Kepa is actually decent. And with a solid defence and fans and manager back in, he could be top three keepers in Europe. Bro, I do not know what you're smoking. <laughs> I mean, I would have accepted this maybe two seasons ago after 18-19. But, bro, as someone who was Kepa in for so long last season, 
It's over, man. The game is over. I'd love to see a, a Kepa redemption season. It would be amazing. But I don't see it. The guy's confidence is gone. He can't command his box. He can't reach for shots. If you take a shot into the top corner, he's going in because he can't reach for it. And as a professional goalkeeper, you can't be doing that. You can't be in a position where you literally can't reach shots because you're too small for it. I love Kepa. I'm really not trying to put any unnecessary hate on him. He still had a couple decent moments for us last season. Well, not last season, the season before in our run to the Europa League final. But no, guys, the game is finished, man. He, he ain't the same player anymore. He ain't going to be that. Kovacic doesn't bring anything new to the Chelsea team. Hence why Mount or Jorginho deserves to start ahead of him. I agree that Jorginho should be starting ahead of him because Kovacic's performances haven't really been up to standard this season. We have to be real about it. And I think Jorginho Kante offers that little bit of defensive stability that you wouldn't have from having Kovacic and Kante together because I've said I feel like they're two similar players. They like progressing with the ball. I feel like they both would be prone to leaving the back line exposed too much whereas Jorginho can actually sit deep and rely on his awareness and positioning to be in the right place at the right time. Kovacic, I won't say he doesn't bring anything new to the Chelsea team, but if you want me to be harsh, he's kind of like a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of player. Like, he don't really have any weaknesses in him. His dribbling is excellent, but his final ball could have a bit more effort. His finishing, I mean, it speaks for itself. He's only had two goals for us in his Chelsea career. Defensively, he's good, but he's not great. Physically, he's good. I think bordering on great, but he's not there. I want to see him be around the top for a lot of categories and he's around the middle area for it which is why you don't really know where he really fits there's like there's areas where you can play in but I don't really know where he can staple as his own position if you want me to have an unpopular opinion of myself there it is I see why he's saying he doesn't bring anything new to the Chelsea team right now but as a player with all of his overall qualities he is a talented player he just needs to have a bit more final end product in him and I think that's it for him. Lampard is too green as a manager right this minute. That does not mean he will not become a world class manager. Kind of agree. I still say Frank Lampard is a growing manager and there are games where he does get tactically outclassed. There are games where he does make mistakes and he isn't perfect. He isn't near that area that you want him to be right now and he's still a developing manager so I give you that. It's also, you're saying he what? It doesn't mean he will not become a world-class manager. Yeah, I agree with this. To be honest, I, I don't think he's too green, but I think it shows, and you see it in some moments. You see in some games, some substitutions where you're like, "What's happened?" I, not so much now because I think the substitutions have improved a lot more. That was more towards the start of his Chelsea career. But I think that green aspect of his man of his managerial understanding it, it's fading away. So I, I will say that. But other than that, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Zuma is a top five centre back in the league. Probably popular opinion this one though. This is a popular opinion. He is up there. Top five, I mean it's debatable. Right now I'm, I'm not really thinking off the top of my head. If you're saying if you're telling me a top ten though, he definitely gets into that. Top five, my bias pushes him up into there as well. But if other people have arguments and other players for who should be in the top five. I wouldn't put it past him, but Kurt Zuma is a heavily underrated defender. I think his link up with Thiago Silva is going to be so excellent for us this season. I'm not going to overrate him too much. I think on the ball, he does have his moments of lapse, of concentration lapses. But other than that, I think he's a quality defender. His range of passing is great. His recovery speed is amazing. His ability to get in the right position at the right time and to cover for Thiago Silva as well is going to be very key for us. So yeah, Zuma top 5 centre back in the league, you're damn right, that is a popular opinion, I agree with that. Chilwell and Ziyech will prove to be our most influential signings this season. I think you mean this season, I don't know if you mean the season afterwards, but even if you did, that's a lot of speculation, so I'm not going to go into that. This season though, I, I fully agree with you, left hand side is going to be completely revolutionised because we're going to have someone there that isn't a bum in Ben Chilwell. Ziyech, I'm not going to say he's not going to have a, a great impact for us. But I think Mendy's going to be a lot more important compared to Hakim Ziyech because we've seen how low the bar has been set in terms of goalkeeping. And anything Mendy does is just going to be better than what we've originally had. So I think Mendy's going to be really key to whatever we tr aim to achieve this season. Same thing with Hakim Ziyech, but I'm going more with, with Edouard Mendy and Ben Chilwell instead. Chelsea will be in a title race come the end of the season. Not many are giving Chelsea a chance, but at the very top at the moment but sheer talent in this team means that it will shine through yes 
Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'll be real. I'm not sure. Um, there's still a lot of speculation in that. It's very early into the season. There's other clubs that have come out of nowhere, like Everton, who are just bowling through everybody right now. And I'll be real, there's plenty of clubs that could be in a tie race come the end of the season. The way we're looking right now, we haven't really hit our final form as well. We're not nowhere near our full potential. So I'm not sure whether to say we'll still be in the title race or not come May. We could be. I mean, as soon as we hit the ground running, I don't think we'll stop. It all depends on when we finally hit the ground running, which I'm hoping is after the end of this international break. I kind of agree with you. Kind of. As a Chelsea fan, I agree we can still be in the title race next season. As a completely neutral football fan, maybe. Maybe. I can't lie. Off the top of my head, Liverpool will still be around. Ignore the 7-2 drubbing by Villa because it, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to mean anything. Man City, they should probably still be around. It's very early to say this. Everton, maybe. Tottenham, you already know what second season Jose is all about. We're not counting Arsenal in this. I don't care. Um, Manchester United definitely ain't getting involved. Right now, I'm seeing about four or five teams that could be involved in this race. Could be. So, I'm not sure. But again, the bias in me says I'll take it. Kepa being in goal was the main reason our backline struggled so much last year. They were always worrying about how we would perform if attackers got through and if it forced them to make mistakes and sit back too far. No, I don't agree with that. It's hand in hand, Kepa in the defence. Kepa was poor, but I think to say that the back line was just worried too much about Kepa is a massive excuse for the defence. Organisation looked amateur level at times from us last season. We were getting played around the park. Zuma was probably the best of a bad bunch last season. Christensen had shades of David Luiz in the way that he was playing. I've spoken so many times about both of our left backs. It would just be me repeating old news if I said it again. Alonso and Emerson are just bummy. Aspie and Reese James, I thought were very solid on that right-hand side. I feel like I'm missing someone in defence. Fakayo Tomori didn't really get the amount of game time that he wanted. And Rudiger was just trash. But defensive organisation was an absolute shambles from us last season. I'll be real, I can't hear you saying that... Kepa was the main reason for it. He was a huge reason for it. And his save percentage was horrendous. But the defence was horrendous too. The defence was an absolute joke. They went hand in hand and they were just altogether awful. But guys, that is the end of unpopular opinions for you today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the opinions or any of my opinions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the chels.